I guess we're ready. Oh, we are ready. Mm. Um, God knows where this will lead us. But um, I was thinking that one thing where I, uh, the reason why I wanted to invite you, John, and also Sterla, is that my interest in myths and historical knowledge and looking across vast expanses of time is that it breaks up that whole uh, Hegelian idea of time as compartmentalized mm. and one time is over, there's no contact, here's a new time and there's no contact with the previous time. And that is plaguing the modern mind, I think, to a too great d degree. And when, oh. when you're talking about myths going back 100,000 years or 200,000 years or even further back than that, or you have these ideas of movements of peoples across time that are coming up now, as you, you are, uh, are interested in, um, then that breaks up that whole narrative, as they say. And I think that... Well, well the false... Narrative. Exactly. Yeah, people exactly. are always it's moving, time. things are always changing. It's, yeah, yeah. yeah, this. yeah, yeah. Because I, I think if you shall have a culture with some, some level to it, you need to think across time to not mm. separate yourself. Because if you're separating yourself from things, and I'm speaking as a painter, obviously, if you separate yourself from something made 400 years ago, then you are really cheating yourself from being compared with some really great works that may improve yourself right and you are distancing yourself from uh, archetypal or eternal stories that prevail throughout a long vast expanse of time which could make even greater paintings even greater literature etc and, and all kinds of other fields as well i think if you if you're not connected to a specific time well, well mo more than that i think because if you like you're talking about if you accept this perception of time that modern society tries to put us into these small frames and uh, and the uh, time now is so short that uh, 20 seconds on TikTok even is a little bit too long at times before you have to use that finger somewhere or have some uh, uh, light of enjoyment uh, screen your uh, light your face up for enjoyment new impressions yeah. uh, exactly well uh, w what you're missing then is real art i think like depth in uh, in total like quality and if you don't have quality you you uh, anything goes you just mm. have variations of different themes that everyone's heard before and nobody knows um how to stand your ground or how to remember uh, you're wiping away your uh, both your ancestors and your heritage in a sense. I, I, I think, John, we've been um, for the past three decades, we've had rather lazy year, years. I don't know about you, but uh, here in Norway with all the oil, we really felt that when you get uh, too lazy, you tend to not care so much if things go in this direction or that direction. But, but now people care so much more. Mm. Nothing motivates more than outer fear and gathers a group together and gets us to talk together. Mm. And, and mm. so I think we're a little bit at the cross points now. It's interesting. Oh, I must admit, I do agree with your in interpretation that certainly more the youth today seem to have a, ne a sort of a need for quick fixes in terms of time. Mm. Um, but it's quite interesting if, if you go back thousands of years, the, the the myth that holds true, who talk about myths, it, uh, through that is the Bible, which is canonical in mm. its in its myths, and it's one of the few religious texts that is canonical, and it's the reason why it was never copied because you people couldn't take things out of the context of timeline it, it set up. So it's there's an interesting sort of challenge there in a, a way where you say you don't want to be taken out of or, or have these limits in time because one of the most successful books of myths survived that because anybody who looks at this it, is looking at it out of time well in europe the only country who were allowed to have sermons in the church in their own language was croatia actually in the 1000 okay. years ago yeah they started that early Serbia and the other Christian countries around all had to speak in Latin. Yes. And of course, when you monopolize the language, everything goes through the church. Like in our country in Norway, 
Uh, you were sitting in the church 600 years ago. You didn't understand anything, of course. Yeah. I don't understand and, and, anything that you said. And there were only monks and, and, and yes. the, the clerks uh, who were allowed to ha ha know the ability to write. Mm. And of course, the Gutenberg, the printing press, destroyed everything there. You know, from then, it's, uh, everything changed. Broke up the monopoly, you mean? Uh, in a sense, yeah. because that's what Martin Luther yeah. uh, really revolutionized. He were able to oppose to his tremendous amount of writing um, to oppose Southern Europe. It was a new battle between Northern Europe and Southern Europe that we've seen so many times in history, which mm. creates a merger or... or yes, or a, a revolt and... Exactly. I think which, the witches uprising sort of happened around that time as well. There was yes, lots yeah. of pushback against superstition, against women, against yeah. people who didn't fit in with the view the church had, or, or certainly yeah. Luther's had, or what and in, in reality, it's a monopolization of knowledge that happened for centuries mm. on. And if you were um, in opposition, uh, I mean, they would not just scorn you, you would be burned. Yes, right? well, absolutely. This is reminiscent of, of uh, something we talked about uh, when we were having dinner, right? It's this, uh, I had this conversation with the painter, uh, Jonas Landstad, who talked about the diff we talked about the the, the um, mystery of the Ulysses mm -hmm. and the transition from that to Christianity, which is a transition from the person who is religious as someone who is practicing mm -hmm. or actually doing it mm -hmm. into someone who's sitting and listening passively. Exactly. Well, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, because the Ulysses mysteries. I mean, Marcus Aurelius. He took his son when he was 16, mm. tried to get, uh, yeah. in, <laughs> that, that, yeah. don't do that. But, but that must, I mean, it must have a great bearing on a culture, whether you are actually participating yourself or if you're yeah, yeah. passively receiving. Mm. Same thing as I think we touched upon in our conversation, our interview, or the interview, yeah, was, this thing about the separation or the difference between a culture where gods are created and a culture where God creates. Exactly. Mm. And, and where yeah. gods are created, you tend to have ritual to inform myth. You you, you have to partake. Where the, the church, or things like the Abrahamic religions, they're only minor rituals you take part in. And they're almost superficial in a way. You come in and you do the, the, do the cross mm. and then maybe take the blood and the wine. So the point That's is the allegiance it, into it, it, the yes. group, but not actually that it's not it's not important that you are participating it, in ritual. Exactly. And and that I think that's partly because of the way the church has been developed to acquire as many members as possible. Yeah. Yeah. That was the whole point to be the biggest thing, I think. Uh, well, yeah. well you do have you do have the bread and circus in the Roman times, uh with mm. watching gladiator games. Right, and which is sort of like a one-sided affair because you're the audience. At the same time, 2000 years ago, Tacitus, he wrote about how the Germanic tribes would have these rituals where men would dance naked with weapons. Mm. You know, it's very uh, well written and interesting to read. Uh, mm. so, so I think that period from there through, like I mentioned, Marcus Aurelius, that was in the end of the 20th, um, second century. And then you have a 100 year period until 330 or the, 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 the Christianity three, starts. Yeah, 324, up, yeah. I think it is, when you have Constant, uh, Constant Constantine Hebrew, yeah. the Great. That's when this transition, I think you're absolutely yeah. right, because yeah. then everything was monopolized. And then exactly. And then you, the idea of myth is lost at that point. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Mm. Uh, and again, mm. this is uh, speaking from a painter's perspective. Uh, as uh, I think I mentioned in the beginning, that this whole idea of the Hegelian idea, idea of, of having to belong to your time, having to, and that's so strange too, that it is a sort of an ethical ideal to be in your time, then you're sort of brave. But what are you really saying? Well, you're saying that I do what everybody else are doing at present because I don't have any backbone to stand mm. out mm. and be something different, right? Mm. But it's, I'm just wondering if there's a, a connection there between that idea that Hegel is promoting and this idea of the, the chronology that comes in with the Bible. Is there some kind of, of similar idea of, of, because Hegel has, we don't have to get into Hegel in details, but, but his point is that you, there is a plan with history. It's going in a direction and time yeah. wants this it's or that, linear. and you just have to follow, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, that, that isn't the case, because I mean, no, what 
the, oh. you can't say the world was cursed we don't really know how it was but that people were always moving cultures were yeah. always interacting right. but the dispersals were going both ways people see maps today if they try to do a little piece of academia let's say go on wikipedia to see <laughs> a dispersal map and they and they just get that one snapshot thinking people have just spread out but they don't yeah. realize they spread out and continue to move around and, yeah. and interact they, they don't yeah. see that and I say that's that's why and even myth may not inform that because they don't necessarily understand all the versions of myth you know, you know so yeah it's 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 so in which case what version of the myth do you want from right. the timeline because that can be politicized I mean like like with all of the holy right it's like you pick the one that a, suits you yeah, yeah, it yeah. becomes a political or church issue to make mm. him a holy person, and so now we're talking about him because he's been sort of mythologized, mm. Mm. right? But another thing that happened after this uh, start of the fourth century um, was replacing all the pagan holidays and the rituals, the, which were exactly. yearly connected to the equinoxes and um, uh, the the other. <laughs> <laughs> it's called equinoxes in yeah, the fall. Equinox, yeah, yeah, there's the solstices as well. Solstices, yes. thank you. Yeah. And um, because that was really something they worked hard on for every country that like Christianity exactly. spread. Exactly, we proved the ritual. Mm. And that's why we have, uh, you know, I think Lithuania and, and Baltic states, they, they were among the last they, they were, yes. places in Europe where the, a lot of the myths have survived. And even today you find a lot of tree worshipping uh, up until present day, actually. Mm. Uh, which is very similar to both Slavic and Germanic ways, and uh, maybe Celtic too. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, we, yeah, there's hints that it. Okay. That deal yeah. with nature, so yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. You the have to assume that they are similar. They will be different, but they are yeah. similar peoples with similar views and, mm. yeah. and and Easter is a good example. Yeah, we're getting close to Easter now, and uh, in Norway we call Easter Påske. Mm. which is a Jewish yeah, uh, the Jew word, yeah, the, the Passover. Passover yeah. um, but of course, Easter, uh, the connection to the goddess Oystre, the fertility goddess, is it? Uh, I've is heard that, you've been a little bit unsure. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I think because it, it's based on, on Bede, a single line from Bede's work about you know, where where yeah. does but, that come from? And he's saying, but Bede is a very good source, right? Traditionally. Yeah, but his, his, his source is ambiguous in, in okay. the sense that it may be referring to a group of people who have come from the East and arriving in Canterbury or some place within England, oh. rather than a, a, a goddess. So, but I do admit Easter is on a lunar cycle. Yes, and that is the, the big giveaway that that is not a church holiday. Yeah, mm. that is um, been adopted. But, but you see, in in um, in Scandinavia and the Baltic states, you you have the first of May as a very big fertility day. It's yes, the start of spring. We do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and we call it Valborg. The, mm. the night of Valborg, mm. and uh, it's very very important. And we used mm. to burn um, big fires yes. every 1st of May, but now we moved it until the summer solstice in Norway. We used to have a Maypole, but in England, yeah. I think you still have some places. Some places place still allow yeah, it. Even yeah. in Germany, some places I've seen, and Austria, they have Maypoles. Yeah. But in Sweden, it's big. But they moved the Maypole until summer solstice now. Because oh, so used summer. So you see that summer, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. So, yes. So that means, yeah. but it used to be on the, this Valborg 1st ah. of May, but mm. we call it Valborg's Messe, which is, we've Mass, Christianized yeah. it, mm, yeah. Valborg Mass. But, but that, yeah, that still is celebrated, and it's celebrated by people who are more heathen in their views and ways, you, you see there. So yeah. that's still, it has some reasonable following, based in particular areas in England yeah. where we held that, but it is, it's a very good festival. Lots of beer, and, <laughs> and we have Morris dances, which is like our country dances, our national. I've seen stories. that on YouTube, okay, not yeah. on your channel. Lots yeah. of bells and banging of sticks and yeah. hoys going around. It's, right. it's so but, entertaining. But, but, after but a that few maypole to me, it's such a big fertility thing. Oh, I, yes, that's, that's uh, the, it's the same in England also. Exactly, it's and we have the horse, a lot the horse as well. The people with. Horses. Like, like the horse head on a pole. Yeah. And yeah. go around like that. Because the horse is. That's something with fertility to do. That's got lots to do with fertility. Really? <laughs> yes. I would imagine other parts of the horse will be used. Yes, exa exactly. <laughs> but uh, there's, all through Europe you have that. Okay. There's one Romanian story where the man goes around and hits a woman on the head, which is meant to 
make her fertile. Yeah. That just as the horse. Oh, does that work? <laughs> I wouldn't suggest we try it. No, we're not recommending <laughs> Please do not try hitting a woman on the head while you're dressed as a horse. If a woman, is, a if a woman is barren, uh, or you say barren with women. Uh, yeah, 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 we yeah, don't want yeah. 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 You can hit them on the head. Yeah. No, you, you can't oh, yeah. hit them on the head. If you're dressed as a horse, you could Oh yeah, yeah. In, in the old days. Yeah. I didn't say it's okay to do that. Exactly. That, that was your, your words. Exactly. Or, no. yeah, <laughs> of course, no, none of us uh, agree with Sean Connery hitting them on the bottom, right? Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that festivals are that amazing. But it's also, hmm. but there's lots of confusion in it as well. So we have yeah, yeah. Dru people dressed as druids turning up to our solstices like Stonehenge. And druids never turned up to Stonehenge. They, <laughs> Yeah, 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 that's true. And they're often facing the wrong way as well. Yeah. They, they, yeah. they don't really understand. So it's, it's a winter it's that idea that it's something old. So it's yeah, just it's, it's, so we see a lot of that. Yeah. So it's understanding it again and saying the myth you want to pick yeah. to meet your own criteria, and that's how we create our gods and our yeah. religions. You shape it to how you want it to be. But I was wondering what one thing, and uh, <laughs> I continue to mention it because I know I don't like Joseph Campbell. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Are we going to talk but, about him again? Uh, we could. <laughs> no, but, but uh, this one thing that he says that I actually do uh, react to, which, uh, well, it's a bit strange in some way, where he talks about how myths are, and I guess you've been talking about the same thing also, are adjusted to the local cultural variation and the variation of the time so that it's... Ex Society and landscape. Yeah, That's but really uh, I was wondering if you, with a myth, reach something that is fundamental to human nature, why would you need to update it at all? Oh, um, bec because you, things still change in landscape. If you have a myth, the cattle raiding myth, uh, and you're in a place with no cattle, yeah. well, you're you going to have to feel change. what the cattle is. Exactly. <laughs> well, you get rid of it. Yeah, yeah. so th th there's, uh, I guess, some myths have to change to meet the landscape and society. The dragon raiding myth, or yeah. the dragon, sorry, the dragon myth is key where it goes from a dragon that gives you water to a dragon that holds water back. Yeah. Because we went from not needing to have our crops watered because we roamed around yeah. to having a, an agricultural centre and you wanted rain and it wasn't coming. So but, yeah. that, the myth changes to say. Cause it, and and you also you mentioned Stonehenge, uh, mm. which is interesting because we see that after uh, you know the, the Neolithic um, agricultural culture built that, right? And New Grants. Yeah. Uh, but once all the men, it was a population turnover, but the women, after, we see yeah. it even in the Orkney Isles, a lot of not just men, but women escaped north when the in the European, or, well, the, the bell beakers they were called, right? Yeah, but the, 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 yeah, but the, the warriors European came, thought, basically. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so, but what we see is that, all right, they, 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 they took the women, obviously, and uh, had children with them. But the thing is, they still continued to have ceremonies at Stonehenge, right? But of course, that would have been a blend from where yes. they came from with their own mm. culture and mix. And that's what we see in Scandinavia also. Mm. And this is also the reason why you have the Dragon Slayer, since you mentioned Dragon, and you have St. George in, in Georgia and the Caucasus as important and many other places in Europe, right? Mm. And, and, and that's where I think John's work is so interesting because you can take that myth, like the Dragon Slayer myth, and you can compare it in all different places around in Europe and you can use that landscape way of looking at how well people came at different times in in period agriculture spread northward at different times and 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 Christianity spread the same way in mm -hmm. different times right and if you know these as factors you can actually be able to put this into sort of like a family tree exactly that is the Phylogenetics, as we call it, exactly that. So, what, what, what? phylogenetics, it's we use statistical models mm -hmm. to understand the probability of a myth traveling by looking at the language and the, the population dispersals, you know, about using archaeological finds, DNA, and working out would a myth go this way, and we can better understand that. And before mm -hmm. you say anything else, you know, there's one more thing we have to say. Because up until recently, everyone thought about languages, how they are related, like the Indo-European mm -hmm. languages or the Uralic languages, like in a family, and everyone pictures a tree. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. that has been largely disproven now, because it doesn't look like a tree, like the English and French languages. They have been intertwined several times in history. Mm. The same can go with myth. And now people are talking, or scholars are talking about, uh, you can't use a tree anymore. You have to use uh, some kind of, you call it krat, 
in, in Norway, yeah, like a, a strawberry or a shop, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. as I say, things continue yeah. to move. Yeah. Yeah. It isn't that yeah. static. We we make trees because it's easy for people to understand, but that isn't really what's going on. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, yes. And in myths, you have that. And what I think is interesting then, when you, like you say, you have people celebrating on Stonehenge today, dressed as druids and standing the wrong way and <laughs> all of that, but. I have a parallel there because I have been to Crimea mm -hmm. and Azov in, in uh, okay. where there's a war now and I collected DNA from uh, looking for Goths okay. uh, uh, in, in villages of ancient Greek populations in villages. Okay, because they did go to yeah, the Black yeah, Sea. Some they? Greeks yeah. came during Katarina the, right. the Great, those are new Greeks. Uh, they look uh, much differently from the old Greeks who speak uh, Koine dialects and never married outside their village, uh, with only with other Greek villages, and lived there for 2,000 years. And, and they looked so Scandinavian, it was really uh, interesting. We took DNA from them to try to find this okay. Gothic, uh, Crimean Gothic. Um, but what they told us, they told us so many stories, but what they, one of the things they told us was that, you know, we, religion is stronger than ever to us, Christianity, of course, and uh, Orthodox Christianity. But during the Soviet times, uh, Christianity was disallowed, of course, mm -hmm. the That's churches right. were no more. And, and people, um, the thing is, they said, even though we were supposed to have no religion, no superstition, no, believe in nothing except uh, equality, um, it didn't work out. And people have a need to believe. People will always have a need to find their roots, uh, search for their roots, find some kind of common ground, maybe not to understand everything, but to, I, I think it's a resonance to the past. Uh, yes, in a sense. That's, that's quite yeah, interesting. So it almost brings us back full circle to where we started, right. I would say, because in effect, the, the, the meaning of myth has changed. You know, not only myths change, but the meaning of myth change. So myth and logos in the period of Greek time are very different meanings to what they mean now. So myth was a, a more masculine about battles and war and fights. That was called myth. But logos was more about the more what's called gossipy tales and the like that didn't necessarily have this hero surrounding them. Mm. Uh, it was very much considered a feminine form of, mm. of that and and myth of masculine form and, but then when they go to rome and rome starts hearing these myths they call them fabulae so they already thinking actually these aren't true fables. at all oh. yes they're, they're like fables and then christianity comes along and it disappears until you find um piccolo mini who becomes pope pius ii uh in i think that's probably I mean, it might be the 1400s, 1500s, he discovers Tacitus's Germania mm. document. He gets it out and looks at it. Uh, and he says to everyone, oh, look, you all barbarians. That's why you should listen to us and, and the Mediterranean. We have the antiquity. We have the, the, the history. So that's why we're good. But then other people start getting their hands on that document and realise, actually, no, the Germanic tribes, they had you know, a, a society. They had respect for people. And, and, and the Germans are like, oh, this is quite interesting. And then a hundred years later, the uh, poet, uh, poetic edda was found. Mm. And that comes along and then suddenly Scandinavia realises, oh yeah, we, we had some culture and history. And that sort of starts boiling up some nationalism. And then a hundred years later, the Finns try, you know, they create the Calavella. Yeah. And, and, and the other countries that do that. And it's a, a myth then starts forming from that. And the Russians start with the pun Slavization. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, 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 that's, and you get these, these stories built up and naturalism built up. Machine or Ossian. Um, there's, a, there's a number of myths in Russia. I'm not, that's not one of my hot spots. No, I mean, um, in the in the, in the, um, the poems of Ossian. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So, because that's, that's very early work. I think that's one of the first piece of literature but yeah so so we get this and and it forms nationalism and realizes actually that rome had lied about you know they were the center of of, of culture and we see these stories come up such as uh, noah's son uh, i think his name's just fight was changed to uh, something like troy a so it would link to mm. um Twisco from uh, the Germania, the myth of Germania. So they try to say, oh no, that's, you know, the people in Germania have 
came were alive at the same time as the people in the Near East. So we yeah. have equal standing, and the church yeah. didn't like that. And yeah, we, and then that's we see how all the Troya, the connections to Troya that they e- made. Ex- that exactly time. as as well, and you, you yeah. see see all this, and it's a really mm-hmm. interesting to see how, and that's why we now have a sense of nationalism pride and why we want to find that out because we realise that for 12, 1300 years the church lied by saying oh we are the only you know, we are the so culture you, you've come from yeah, we, we are the bearers of truth the yeah, only truth right? Yeah, yeah, our, our that, truth. That, that's yeah. why like you mentioned um, after the time of Dante or after the Black Plague really when, when they found all about, about this in the church and they started to call the Germanic times for the dark ages mm-hmm. right and then we have two dark ages before the antiquity of Greece after mm. the late Bronze Age collapse, yes, yeah, that's what, yes. and 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 of course uh, with the Fimbul winter and and when mm. Lombards, Longobardi, like they still say in southern Italy, would rule Italy and and fight against the Byzantines. Um, but uh, and it's interesting that like like you talk about myths, how how things change, like with the just Gothic, like if you think about a Goth now, a lot of people. Or maybe watching now will think about a, a gothic young woman dressed really <laughs> ugly in all black and uh, and just yeah. want to oppose. Mm. Or you think about gothic novels, which were yeah. was a thing in the 19th century. Mm. Or you think about the gothic architecture, mm. which was is 800 years old during the Roman times, right? But they're all connected, and that's the intriguing part because if you view history in the right way. You will see how they're all connected, just like you're doing on yeah. your YouTube channel. Thank I you. love yeah. that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good point. That's yeah, cool. the, 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 there is a connection, or a very clear connection to what I am interested in, this thing about breaking up the linearity of, of history mm. in mm. what you, yeah. the two of you are talking about right now. Mm. And, and uh, one thing, it's partly Joseph Campbell, <laughs> <laughs> but also, uh, Aud Nerdman has been talking about this, I remember, I think when I also was living in Iceland, talking about the, uh, l- like the original myth or the Ur myth or the myth behind the myth. So if you have... Um, like uh, a core? Or? Yes, w- you, you have Orf- Orpheus and Eredice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you can take Orpheus, you can take Eredice and replace it with any other name, or you can take Dragon and replace it, replace it with okay. a cattle or, or whatever. And there is some some uh, uh, skeleton there which is the same and if you can reach those things and you can understand what those things are i think then you can really make something and you can you can then maybe clothe it partially into something that fits the time i mean when you read um, uh, the great gatsby that's really a mythical novel in some sense it is sort of 1920s but still it's not he mixes in this these strange mythical motifs of the valley of the ashes there that they travel past into New York, and mm. he makes even a, 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 mm. a commercial sign into sort of a mythical image. It's very strange that he can he he actually manages to because it's, he's not concerned with just describing the time, but with finding some kind of essence in there. The, the meaning of it, yeah, the, the, the root. Yeah. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. if you do, if you do want to make something that lasts through different times that is timeless in a sense you you got to find something that's eternal in a sense like after the spread of agriculture when man first took uh, ownership of uh, of land of uh, animals and humans property became important you had class society and of course you have people who want to climb the uh, mm. class society and and that those are epic tales in Nor- Norwegian uh, 19th century literature like Ibsen, but we have some other writers who are even better at mm. describing how uh, man or sons, wealthy sons, would marry with beautiful daughters who were below their mm, stature, yes. right? And those battles, and then you have the, the, the poor son, like in uh, Victorian England, mm. who maybe is from a good heritage, but mm. he seems like he's uh, been orphaned. Yeah, yeah, Victoria yeah, yeah. by Hampson. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Hum- yeah, yeah, and and and. But the thing is, those are classic tales because every, for the past eight thousand two hundred years in Europe, Sick. you've had that kind of um, uh, social movement. We call it mm. social mobilitet, mm. uh, yeah, yeah. up and down the classes. Mobility, and, yeah. and the only exception you find is in uh, with the Gupta Empire in India. 
which of course was they spoke mm -hmm. Indo-European uh, language there also. Uh, they were the first ones 1600 years ago to enforce the penalty of death if you married outside your caste. Mm. And, and that sort of kind of um, uh, sets the different yes, caste system could, yes. uh, for a little bit harsher times yeah, than uh, yes. that lasts no. today and right. today. Yeah. But, but it's, it's, if you want to create something timeless, that's, that's, that's I mean, you got to co connect in yep. your art. You got to be able to get, uh, have people connect to your art and, yeah. in, in some timeless ways. Sacred. Well, yeah. I think myths are sacred, and that's sacred. what you need that sacred truth. Sacred truth. In that's, sense, that's, yeah. Your painting needs to show us a sacred truth. Eternal. But, but that's yeah, well, interesting I also because. Campbell was, yeah. <laughs> you're picking on me now. That's, that's unfair. Thanks. Campbell. Campbell. <laughs> you won't be able to sleep tonight. That's only him. Um, <laughs> no, but it, yeah, that's, that's interesting. That this thing about if. And, and it seems to be a common trait f almost for any field. It's, uh, th this is, of course, very simplistic, but, but it seems like in any field you get a certain narrative, as you say, and then. At a certain point, someone actually goes to whatever they're talking about and they look at it, mm -hmm. study it empirically, and find out no, actually it's quite it's the opposite yeah, or something yeah, completely yes. different. And so the problem, socially speaking, is always the person who actually looks at reality. And 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 oh, okay. my beef in this is all the time is that if you go to the core of a myth or the core of the human existence, then you are looking at what things really are. And this is an image I, I, I tend to use often to, to describe how do you find out what is important. So, and I know this because it, uh, uh, a guest I had once, he told me this. He was uh, present there and there were some boys together and they were having fun. And one of them gets a call and it turns out I think it was his friend who was, who was seriously injured in hospital due to a car accident or something like that. And he, when, I, when he told that story to me, he would told the, he because in the, he's an actor, he, to, he sort of enacted the, the expression where he was like, hi. And then you see the whole face just changing because something yeah. really important comes in. It's not about, hey, the latest joke or whatever. All that stops, not because it doesn't have humor, <laughs> but because something exactly really important right, comes in, right? Yes. Yeah, and I think if you, if, and then, that, of course, that's a sort of an extreme case in some ways, but it, the minute you go to what is really important, what is re really the essence of a thing, that's when you, you can create something in any kind of field that lasts just, not just in your time, but beyond that time. Okay, Can I, I would retort academically yeah. that is There's no uh, empirical evidence for that. But, uh, <laughs> but I would rather t get all the myths together that you think are the same, take away all the differences, right. and then what you're left with is probably like the what, what you want. On yes, yeah, yeah. Exactly, yes, rather yes. than go to the source, yeah. take what, yeah. because the important parts of the myth will be maintained irrespective of landscape and society. Yeah. Well, you know, that's not too many words. Hmm. If you want to describe the core of a myth, I've heard you many times on your YouTube channel and you want to tell the story and that reminds you of another story here and there and other places and you can see why the different vari variations are. But if you want to tell the the story, the twin story or the, hmm. I mean, all the, yeah, yeah. it's. Uh, um, you're referring a little bit to these eternal questions mm. that always will be mm. and and it will always be intriguing you know you have the cave myth or 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 you have um like uh, let me let me do a, a horrible example uh, i i once read this magazine called preacher preacher mag the tv series is it's just horrible <laughs> uh but the magazine is wonderful but it basically tells a story about power and and how uh, the rulers above the rulers of the church um, decide that, you know, we just care about the power. And all the rituals that we have in all our churches and all our communities, they are the most important because they, they are the ones who are enforcing power. Mm. So it doesn't matter if it's a core that has some truth in it. We just, we'll just go along with the perception. That's an eternal question that the preacher mag uh, took up and made a really good uh, sh show off actually, uh, show, uh, the, 
It's, it's actually really good. But that goes, uh, you see that in so many different stories. You see, it's this discontinuity that we see among so many peoples. I met in, in Kazakhstan, I met the nomad people talk about the Kulak, when the, when the Reds won over the Whites in the Soviet Empire, and, and they attacked Kulak, means fist, right? But it was everyone who owned more than one cow, or even a cow, I think, would lose the property, and you have to join the Communist Party and the KGB if you wanted to have some kind of future. But you would lose all property, right? Um, uh, but when you talk to nomads today, they talk about clan and tribe and all that, you know, they talk about heritage, but they cannot feel what they long to feel because they have this continuity and that's like 30 years. They were enforced to move from the steppes into cities, mm -hmm. you know. Same thing happened with the Inuit people on Greenland. Mm -hmm. It caused a lot of alcoholism and a lot of abuse. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Greenland today, I, mean, I tell you, it's horrible to be a colony under the Danish. You should try it once, it's horrible. Yeah. We tried for 400 years, yeah. but the, the, the Greenlanders... <laughs> We're older with, yeah, yeah, as I was say. Yeah. My point is, uh, the, the Greenlanders, uh, the Greenland men, have uh, uh, the highest suicide rate by far in the world. Uh -huh. um, because the Danish, when they were colonizers, they used alcohol as a means to, to stay in control. That's a, that's a Same thing point. along the coast of Norway, and especially up north in Norway. And with the Sami, uh, I remember the first time I met a shaman in this philosopher's uh, circle. Uh, he's a very renowned shaman, he's deceased now. But uh, when we got drunk, he told me, and he perhaps shouldn't have told me this, but uh, he told me anyway, uh, he said, you know, I don't know shit what I'm doing when I'm banging on my drum. Uh, you know, I have all the right clothes. I know the words to say. I know the drum that makes the sound and I have all the symbols on the drum, yeah. but I don't know shit because it's a discontinuity. You know, yeah, it's, it's about, so uh, I, I'm not sure if it's 30 years oh, or 50 yeah. years since the... That's the thing, over a generation, we exactly. sit in Romania, mm. when they, they went to communism, they weren't allowed to preach, and so all the folk tales would stop being told, and, yeah. and so they've lost that. But the biggest example of this is America, and the slaves brought over from Africa. So the slaves going into America had everything taken from them, even their culture. They weren't mm. allowed to practice anything, but those taken to the Caribbean islands c continued that, they were allowed to. And so you see this really disparity on how people are treated of, of colour in America versus the colour like in the Caribbean. There's, because they've that, lost that's that That's why culture. you have voodoo in Haiti, huh? But possibly, but it's, it's, yeah. it's a, I mean, I don't, I mean, I've heard of academic papers studying this, but I think that's some of the reason why there is so much, well, oh. you know, if so many issues in America at the moment. Well, we've, you have, yeah, it's probably true because I, I've been in Brazil for a year and, and there you have, especially in, in Salvador, in Bahia, you have the largest or strongest cultural Africa, um, sorry, strongest African culture in the, um, um, both with the Condomble tradition and, and uh, also the Capoeira in Salvador Bahia. And, and they talk a lot about there about um, how they would, if they wanted to keep their pagan religion, they have to incorporate it into the uh, Catholic tradition. Mm. So you have people who are Catholics, who are very Christian, but every morning or every week, they go to, uh, by, in the sunrise, they go to the uh, beach and they make a sacrifice to a god, a goddess, I think, mm. uh, with some flowers on the boat they made mm. and set it out. I mean, they're Christians, but they still do that, you know, and it's how to incorporate that way like in uh, northern Norway or northern Scandinavia they did this with the medical stuff they had these uh, um, uh, women who helped with birth it was so important to uh, you know mm -hmm. not die when giving childbirth yeah. and so women traveled around and they could also stop blood and stopping blood was um, it's magic it's mm -hmm. trolldom really and uh, but some of them were burned of course mm -hmm. that's, yeah that's awful that's so, but yeah. it's, it's that blend. And I think Rastafarism, uh, I also lived in Jamaica for, well, only oh, yes. a few months, but, but uh, I think the rise of Rastafari and that whole, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it can be like a counterculture, but it's Christian, but it's 
I speak cultish Rude because of from Africa or Felice, was it? Who said, "I'm not a god. Don't worship yeah, me." Yeah, in and Ethiopia, then he dies. Anybody worships him. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I've heard people raise their kids that way. You know, mm. you, know <laughs> you use opposite psychology in a sense. <laughs> yeah, yes, really yeah. Haile Selassie uh, in Ethiopia. But, but right. it, all, it all says religion is broken. Is what we're sort of really saying here. Religion has has. Well, well. I think what you're talking about is really, really important to you yeah. artists, guys. At least, I mean, I mean, I write, you talk, and 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 uh, you paint, right? And you teach people to paint. So the thing is, I think a lot of people can feel um, this desolation, almost even uh, collectively, that mm. there's something we're missing in our lives. You know, you have these cheap replacements in screens and dopamine here and TV and movies. Uh, and music and dancing, and food but and yeah, but it's just uh, it's just uh, something cheap that is not the real thing. We're longing for something real, real. something yes. that yeah. roots us. It's because yeah. we've done that Absolutely. for thousands of years. Exactly. If you can do that with painting, get people to connect, uh, which is difficult because people have gotten lazy and they're not used to just enjoying something in quietness you know mm -hmm. like the kids today they don't know how to sit quiet it's like you, you read yeah. a book just yeah. read a book, read yeah, a book. Do, yeah. yeah something i think that that's yeah. one of the major reasons why st we started this channel because it's a lot of uh, again speaking from my profession painters are not really aware of the value or the principles the ideas in their head they're just unconscious uh, about it and so of course that comes out through your hand uh, and affects the quality of what you make. So mm -hmm. what you need to be aware of are to really zoom out and look at the history as a whole and not being trapped in your own time. That's mm. fundamental, I think, for any kind of, uh, any person. Well, not, not to be trapped in the trappings of Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, don't be afraid to find what you're looking for, if you know what you're looking for, but don't assume what society is offering you on a plate, you, is it? Right. Yeah, you know, push and, that plate uh, to a yeah, side. And, yeah. and that's why it's so fantastic to listen to you, to the both of you, because uh, in my field, we are really plagued with this idea, for example, of originality. I have to be myself and express myself. It has to come from inner, my inner me and so. Um, and that whole idea, together with this Hegelian zeitgeist, you have to be obedient to the time, is something that really just kills your connection with an eternal uh, horizon, right? eternal perspective. Mm. Because yeah. you cannot do something that looks like what is done before, which is a very strong similarity between modern art and, and, uh, and uh, the communists in Russia, to re really sever, what, what did you guys just describe? Sever the, the, the contact between a the discontinuity. Yeah, mm. people and their culture, right? So they don't have any kind of security and then they are more easy to lead or, or yeah, they, they are more vulnerable yeah. right? well when so, you have these shallow people living these shallow lives many of them are in control and they don't care about that they yeah. just want variations yeah. to the same theme yeah. just done professionally in a new package and that's yeah, and what the, the common denominator is they don't want you to be in that's contact good. with something that is um, Again, timeless. I mean, this is what, what Aristotle is or talking Or something real, or something deep. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, it, it, and this is the way I think about Aristotle all the time. He's talking about if, how it, I think it's in the Nicomachean Ethics, it talks, of, I don't remember exactly how he phrases it, but it's something like, if something is true, then it is eternal. It doesn't change all the time. It cannot. Like, if a principle it's is true, true, yes. I mean, yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If something works in creating a house, it, it works because yes. of gravity. Gravi exactly. well, gravity, <laughs> gravity is the yeah. truth, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. That's, that's not, the well, will rise. in our time, gravity is more to the left than the, uh, yeah, exactly. because of the time or something like that. You know, well, there, there's some things that are, are that, that, inherently. that you have to yes. abide by in order for a house to stand or in order to tell a story that is successful somehow. There has to be some kind of structure, some kind of objectivity there, which is not personal. And I think that's, I'm so concerned with that, that any kind of discipline that shall survive, 
I mean, we talked about it. Uh, you, you trained Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. you yeah. can't come in here now. Well, yeah, well, we I both, want to invent both my. We have to try yeah. with him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, we've had a little chat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, but you can come in and say, oh, to me it works like this because there are certain things like force, counter force that you have to take into account, right? That that works. Mm regardless of your size or sex or whatever. And of course, it's so in painting and writing and all kinds of other fields. So I have a predicament here, which is uh, genuine, real and, and for, for me. And I'd like to bring it to, to both of you now in exactly what you're talking about. Because, all right, but the pessimist will always say that every word has been spoken before, every sentence, everything has been said before. And uh, you can't invent something new. And if you... Why would you? Yeah, why would you? Uh, so, so it's all the same, just variations on the team. And that's yes. what we'll do. We'll just do it well and proper with a proper package, right? But that's just watering things out. And, and that, when you water something out, like entertainment, mm -hmm. uh, like how every movie is made yeah. with these uh, climaxes and you have the last exactly. climax which is called catharsis when Campbell when, with his little yes. heroes so I, with the, and <laughs> when you reach and we're reaching catharsis now soon and when you yes. come up there then it's going to rain yeah. of course you have to have yeah. rain and yeah. every movie has rain towards the, the cliche end. is just cliche it's after just cliche, exactly. and you, well, it's 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 like uh, oh i almost said something um on the edge now but it's 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 like uh when you uh, you become so numb that you don't know what is real. And, and that's a perfect, then you're a perfect product for big corporate business. Yeah, exactly. Example. You and, become and the, the product, you know. Yeah, because you, you don't know anything else. Exactly. And, and, and what that, I, that can work if you sever the ties uh, that people exactly. have to sort of the original myths. Or Yes. Mm. And I met many of these decision makers mm. and the older I get, the more cynical they get because they have to, in a way, they get realistic. <laughs> well, yeah, the, well, they're done being idealistic, of yeah. course, but, but the, the, they, they don't have any connection either, right? So yeah. in order to um, defend for themselves or justify that they earn so much money, they just, uh, that's when they start to read Ayn Rand in the way that you just uh, mm. justify everything in the way that, uh, well, at least I can enjoy myself. Well, I just do the sameness. I mean, there's no point. Exactly. Well, that's where I have to, have to say that they're, they're misreading Ayn Rand. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But that's my predicament, yeah. you know. Yeah. If you just continue rephrasing everything, using new words. But, but it's really interesting what you're saying, because yes and absolutely no. It's the same thing as you can see in, in the, well, take one example, like uh, National Romantic Norwegian uh, Landscapes which is not very different from German landscape of the same time, right? Okay. Um, you see certain certain rules that they follow in terms of exactly how the stroke works. The, the, tree, the, each tree. stone is painted really like this, nice like yeah, this, yeah. with an angle. And you can from that ex extrapolate or deduce that, well, following rules goes wrong. But the problem is not following rules. The problem is when you don't... Well, you can learn Having the rules, rules, but you should also look at nature hmm. and not just the rules. Right? Exactly, exactly. You can combine rules about what works in the story and really look at nature, human nature or the physical nature or whatever, then you have something that can work around. Right? And is that because nature and human nature does not have rules and therefore provides that variation you want? Yeah, yeah, right. And uh, at least so something we can connect to. Mm. Mm. You know, I, w I would like for you, with your expertise and your following um, or followers, uh, to be able to talk about things that people can resonate to and uh, maybe things that are timeless, like myths often are mm. or fables, and, and that can help them as uh, sort of. Uh, bringing depths or, or, or content that means something that is meaningful to their own lives. I, I would like painters yes. like you yeah. to help people um, to open new doors so they mm. can actually connect to something and, and feel something like bigger than themselves and fe feel part of something because that's meaningful and that can set them on a journey. Mm. I and once you're on that journey, then there's no holding you back. Exactly. Get, get something that resonates. That's the hardest thing. Yeah. But, but the more you talk, I mean, people like the oldest stories. Yeah. And they doubly like the oldest stories about their own culture. So you have two fascinating things. Yeah. They're, they thought, but you, 
that I've seen many YouTubers produce videos like that, which are less academically rigorous yes, yes. than they should be. And it's, well, it's well put. <laughs> <laughs> uh, academically challenged. <laughs> I say less less rigorously research than they should. Yes, mm. they are at that, mm. and, uh, and that, that's a point. But they get lots of people viewing them more than yeah. Yeah, because you have the head, the, you have the tagline. And exactly, they have the tagline, and they make it sound even better than it is. So, yeah. in effect, they've looked outside the rules mm. and created a new myth, or sort in a way. So, and how do I compete with that? With you mean like the, there's cherry picking or, or just yes, being sensational? Or, yeah, or so they they use an AI to say, "Can you tell me yeah. the oldest story in the world and write me an essay about it?" During the AI comes up with a story and they read it, but. Huh. They haven't academically checked the story and it's wrong. Yeah. And it may sound amazing because you ask for the most amazing story. And that's mm. so there's so you can get what you want, which is breaking the rules, but that comes also at a cost, which is you, you don't want to get away from a, a sacred truth, maybe, but which you may have broken, or is what they're doing absolutely right, which is creating a myth that is suited for. The modern world that is tweaked so it does mm. resonate that's a so yeah. so can i can i that that's good because what i want to know then is how do you get people's attention i mean you can create shock as a painter you can grab people's attention by that's what most people do in in present day uh, materialistic society because people are so bored with the same thing over and over mm. again and just see these variations and they just go around numb. How do you get them? You have to be more extreme, creating more shock, creating mm. something to stir some kind of talk, yes, 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 uh, yes. clickbait the looks. Uh, but, but, I mean, that's not the way to go. And those are not the people we should exactly. get. We should, we should get these people who knows or at least are open to suggestions. And then how do you, as a painter, um, I mean, you, can, you can't just make a wonderful painting and put it there and say, hey, everyone, come look, because people are too and bothered that, the rub, that, is the, that is the rub. That is YouTube's problem. So you can make the best video ever, but no one's going to watch it unless you've got the thumbnail and the title that is clickable for them to watch it. Mm. Well, so even then you can get cancelled and nobody will watch your videos. <laughs> <laughs> I say, but that is, the, that is the challenge. And it's... and and. I never want to move away from making you know, make my videos academically sound. I want to you know, keep them mm. you know, interesting enough for the layman to, to learn something and, and feel connected. Um, but I have to make the thumbnail a little more sensational so because people judge a book by its cover. And you've got a lovely cover on your new book, by the way. Oh, thanks. So yeah, I thought yeah. it was about him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but that's what they do. They, the, you know, people are haven't got much time, as, which we, again, mm. one of the things you start on. Mm. I've got little time, what do I pick? I'll pick the nicest looking thing, yeah. you know, the nice shiny thing, and, and see if that works. Oh, no, that's rubbish. What's the next shiny thing? Oh, yeah, and, it's, and it's so easy now to pick things that once you pick the shiny thing, then it's got to be engaging yeah, it, straight it's, away. It's more important to uh, pick away things or, or uh, mm. choose what you want to not pick. Ex exactly, and that's that's the problem. How do you choose all that? That is uh, with so much information out there as well. Yeah, the overload, and that's. Uh, uh, I, I'm a historian, right? But mm. during my studies, I remember we did this uh, military course at. Uh, uh, military academy actually and, uh, and it was called information warfare and what you're talking about there is just how a lot of these people you just if you feel if you give people overload mm. they become so confused and so lazy they just prefer you to say why don't you pick for me exactly right? too much choices too much choices is a problem that's why I've never liked Apple. I've always been a PC guy because you have to find out things yourself. <laughs> but it, with Apple, if something's wrong, you just push a button and there you are. <laughs> oh, then there's no choice of Apple, is it? Yeah, that's that, that, yes, that. this is where yeah, you are. Not, it's now you say you're an Apple guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <thank> <laughs> I'm not going to talk about Apple at all. <laughs> I'm going to talk about Young uh, Campbell. <laughs> oh, <instead. please>. no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but but Jan, Jan -Uwe, uh, my point is exactly that um, I, 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 we go through these different time periods, things change and mm. uh, people get more and more uh, numb collectively and, and we get more and more, I mean like the 70s until today, uh, family has lost a lot of its, its values uh, because you, you have to have a society where both 
uh, husband and wife are working and you don't have time so you exactly. put your kids away to, to, the, to the government and, and to everything else and then uh, a generation goes and nobody remembers anymore. Exactly. You, know? you, don't you, take don't, responsibility. you die in the hospital now rather than at home so you even lose that link yeah, from yeah, cradle yeah. to the grave everything's disconnected. So the how are you with also. your art hmm. able to reach into their hearts, That's shake it. them, stir them up a little bit without using this sensationalism, of course, and mm. clickbait, and, and drag them in or lure them in and say, hey, you've forgotten something. That's Why don't mm, good you question. let me just... Yes. I think it, it, so the, there's several sides here. One thing is the actual uh, market, right, with the galleries and all this, which are dominated by a certain idea of thinking, which is not exactly going down my alley or I'm not going down their alley, mm -hmm. which is a market problem. Um, but in terms of what you can do as a painter or as a writer or composer, whatever, I think is to look at the basic human stories all the time go back to that things that are not tainted by the time at least not too, too much mm. so that you can create something that that uh, hits people mm. i mean that that's the only thing you can do you can't be too absolute uh, either you have to mm. adapt some some to right, exactly. exactly you could do commissions and all kinds of that yes. stuff like that too but i mean yeah. i think mm. one thing that um i don't know if we talked about that but it really struck me when i read an introduction to the aristotle's poetics where he talked uh, i forget his name talks about how the tragedy grew out of ritual mm-hmm Okay, yeah, well, that makes sense so, in, in terms of Greece, if yeah, you're talking about and the, the, the use of plays. Yeah, which are, yeah, yeah. and I think sense. if you can go back to that, so that there is a sense of looking at the painting or looking at a theatre play or an opera, and you are participating in that action going on, which means that you have to tell a story, which means that you have to use drama and be sentimental, Ooh. dare to be sentimental you and have pathetic, to be emotional. Yeah. so yeah. that yeah. you can grip, grip people. And uh, once you're aware of that, you can avoid all of these, what I call artification tricks, when they, they try to avoid being, too, being too, cement, uh, too sentimental by painting a stripe over a face or any kind of stuff like that, right? To sort of say, I am modern, or overtly be painting after a photo or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. Then you can avoid all those traps and I think that's the as long as you're not going to invest your life in changing the whole gallery world what you can do when it comes to your own work is to at least start with clarifying what are the most important things to depict right? and well, stay true to yourself I think that's yeah. but, but important the path that you're talking about now is sort of like a path that a lot of people are on now that we're sort of like waiting for society to go the wrong way far enough so that of the 90% of people who, who, are, who, are too, who are unable to do something, you have 10% who just appreciate something genuine. Mm. And those are the ones you have to aim at right. and, and, and so, welcome. Yeah. And then maybe some of the rest, 90% can mm. come after. So that's the, uh, mm. I, I guess, the only way forward. It means you get 800 million sales if you did that 10% of the world's population. <laughs> Not bad. Well, that's potential. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, no, but, but um, I do, do think that that's the appeal of a painting or of a story is that you have this sense of participating in the, the, what is actually going on. Oh, yeah. And of course, that, then we sort of get back to the whole, uh, I guess, at least animistic versus the monotheistic idea with the Inuit myths that you have started to go into also in your uh, channel. Mm. And I love those stories. And I remember in the introduction to the book that I have, uh, there's one thing, and this is how you see that there's a cultural war at the same time, of course, being a war against uh, uh, mythology or this whole idea of, of, of participating in myth instead of just receiving mm -hmm. from a priest. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, it's described how in these very little societies in Greenland, mm -hmm. if there were, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, disagreements, they were starting to brew, mm -hmm. then they had to do something about it. Mm -hmm. So they agreed upon a certain date, I think as far as in a, a year in advance, where they should meet and they should have, a, the, the author compares, compares it to these rap battles, 
where one should stand still and the other one should has has one year to prepare and say all kinds of the worst insults possible and slap him in the face as hard as he, as he could and the one who's standing there should not react because then you lose and then afterwards it was your turn a year and later you, you would say no no then the, the same <laughs> oh yes yeah <laughs> then you would say all your insults and slap the other guy in the face and then it said he was writing that after that they typically became friends they exchanged gifts and all that because i sort of gotten all of that out right so that there's something about participating in in ritual participating in that to, to really get oh. out to express yourself as this <laughs> <laughs> And I think paintings and 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 uh, novels, for example, can be some have some function there. I prefer for people to meet and um, physically. No, no, yes. no, to meet physically. Exactly. We are living so much more and more digitally. We have yeah. to be able to invite people. Like you're opening a gallery here, I think, mm. uh, close by soon. You know, that's uh, oh, the Nerder Museum. Yeah, yeah the Nerder Museum. Museum. That's for uh, th that's an occasion for people to meet. But I think people need to meet more. I think people need to live under the radar, stay less off the phone, be more genuine, and then you can, after a while, uh, start feeling a part of a community, and you can start being feeling a part of something more than yourself. And then you can start to reconnect because you have to reconnect to something. You can reconnect to the myths, you can re reconnect to time in a more uh, less linear way, I guess. Uh, or you can reconnect to your roots, uh, but you have to take the first two steps. Mm. And I think uh, art should be an invitation to do those first two steps. That's one way to do it. And once you are drawn in a little bit, you can start. I mean, some people say now it's January, so now everyone wants to sell books about health and mental health and help yourself. Uh, and, and I saw in the newspaper now, it says, just sit down every evening and read a book for 10 minutes. Just force yourself to do that, you know? Just, I, I mean, I, I sure, I understand nice. where that comes from. You know, just do it um, like it's mechanical. 10 minutes every night and then you force yourself to take those first few steps. Sure, that's one way to do it, but you can get inspired or at least you can if you are a little bit open to it, not just um, too much into everyday stress or um, uh, the alcohol, which is poison, right? And uh, if you're I mean, I, my prediction is that there are still a lot of people who are have this um, who are interested in this all Absolutely, around, yeah. yes. And I, I think art should be an invitation for them to take these first few steps. You shouldn't let them embrace the whole thing because we don't know what the whole thing is and it's very individual. But we, we need help to disconnect from modern day society to, in order to reconnect to something that matters. Because modern day society doesn't really matter that all. But you have to convince people of that. So in a society where everybody's so busy mm -hmm. and haven't got the time, yeah. how do you convince them to create Oh, you don't want to do time? that. Those are the 90%. I'm only talking oh, about God, the 10%, 10 yes. who, oh, yes. who, who understands and who have the ability to do something about it. Oh, Those absolutely. are the ones you want, want to reach. It doesn't hurt. Go in any direction, I would say, because any direction's better than where you are. And if that isn't where you want to go, change direction. I mean, if you don't like art, you know, then look at reading or writing yeah. or, you know. And the only acting. thing people like me as a historian can say is, uh, if we do that, if you're able to do that with art, uh, music or whatever, uh, if you're yeah. able to help people take these first few steps, I, I've only got one really good um, advice then, and that is to do what has worked before in history. And I see one thing that has worked in order to reconnect is to try to maintain some form of mind over matter. Because if you go out on the limb or if you 
uh, go in a new path or a new direction. If you don't have a grip on reality or yourself or mind or matter, you can uh, very easily lose yourself because everything is set up for you to have fear yeah, yeah, yeah. of taking yes. those first two steps. That's a very good point. So you have yeah. to be able to be honest with yourself and, and realistic and don't. And, and that's another thing. Um, I remember I was once in Salt Lake City uh, in um, uh, among um, lots of these, not Mormons, but ex-Mormons at this alternative festival. And they told me that, you know, when we come from being raised in the Mormon society and escaping sort of from that mm -hmm. into something else, we just go from one extremity to another. Mm. And, and they become drug addicts and mm. don't have mind or matter. And that's what I'm, that's my point. If you're going to do these first few steps, and art should also be an invitation to maintain yourself, not composure, uh, in a sense, because you shouldn't go up and because taking those first few steps and reconnecting means letting go a little bit. But yeah, so my, my, my advice then is to, yeah. yeah, but you have to maintain a little bit mind or matter. I mean, sure, you can go like this, but don't go like no, this. Yes, yeah. 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 Small so steps. There should be something, it's difficult in painting, but you know, just those first few steps, we got to help them. So, so imagine all these, um, like, um, uh, what's that monk? He had on, he, how do you say that? The Dutch guy or Flemish painter in the 15th century who made these grotesque paintings, or there are two actually. Hieronymus Bosch. Bosch, yes. Those Bosch, paintings yes. are amazing, you mm. know, even today. It's timeless. And it tells you a story about something that's so corrupt. And, 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 and horrible in many senses. And is it a reaction to that? Or is it just humor? Or is it something, or is it Dante? Or what is it? But it's still mm. popular today. Not just Bosch, but there was another guy who, I can't remember his name, who was, who was even more uh, extreme in a sense, but it's so inviting into something new, which is a little bit scary, but if you have mind over matter, you can handle it fine. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and there's also this, uh, yeah, what do you think about that? This idea of there's a certain kind of irony that actually can help in this um, situation when it comes to uh, telling stories that are eternal. And you find it, for example, in uh, Moby Dick. The way Melville writes is sort of with that, uh, I wouldn't perhaps say Buddha smile, but there's some kind of, he makes it humoristic in a way that he sort of he sort of sees the machinations of these humans, and it seems, he sees it with a slightly um, bit of difference uh, or distance rather, um, which is not to make fun of it, but he's he sort of is something about that good nature's natured acceptance of human folly or whatever humans are doing, right? You, you know, you talk about mm -hmm. the Norse sagas also; mm -hmm. they're like that. Mm -hmm. You know, you tell a tale. Its tale starts with all well, these families and these families, and it's it's like you, you see it from a bird's eye perspective, yeah. and but it's yeah. a, it's, a, it's sort of like human nature in it also, you know. It's mm. like it, yeah, the song is very much like that. Oh, yeah, interesting. Mm. I agree, but now we're on to something. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can move on from here because this is this is this is good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, I think we haven't talked about one thing though, because times do change and, and we have, um, like I'm very interested in these longer per perspectives and how everything moves in cycles, but you do have different cycles working like uh, big, how do you say these uh, in a machine, the things that goes around and are connected with other, uh, there's a word like for Like a conveyor belt of... Yes, yes, exactly. But you have some small ones that are working and some bigger ones. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Different cycles. Or mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Scope of the cycles. Yes, and, and mm -hmm. right now we're in a time, uh, we were in a very changing time in history. I've talked with you about before that every 1500 years we see a big disaster with many, many huge crises emerging at the same time. Now, 1500 years ago, we had the Fimbul winter. 
mm -hmm. um, uh, in the sixth and seventh centuries uh, with the, the effects of that and the plague. Mm -hmm. 3,000 years ago, 1,500 years before, we had the, the late Bronze Age collapse, and even 1,500 years before that, uh, more or less, uh, we had um, the, the fall of the old empire in Egypt and all the big ne Neolithic agricultural cultures fell at the same time, uh, mm -hmm. about uh, f 2200 BC. Now, I'm saying this because um, we have to adapt, I think, a little bit to the times we live in. We couldn't have said what we say now 15 years ago because then everyone was too lazy. Now people are sensing that, all right, there's no stopping next year to be, or this year becoming worse than last year. And last year was pretty horrible. And uh, then we had the two think, years yeah, before that. I think that. that made a big difference. People <laughs> oh, yeah. gave people an For opportunity sure. to realize, yeah. oh, they uh, sit at home and not grow a person or exactly. know, want to grow and change. And yeah. Yeah. Well, you see that people starting to have their own uh, gardens and uh, growing um, yeah, and, and vegetables and uh, manage because there was but a also sense of I, I, strong insecurity. I talk with a lot of women now in Norway, and and we live really far up north. We're not that many people, and people that means in our culture, um, we are much sensitive to change. And if we have had There's 30 late, impact, lazy yeah. years, that's another circle, like, mm -hmm. or 20 years, 20 years. But if you have 30 lazy years and suddenly every, everything one sees that now you can't be a um, weak man. We have to have someone who's uh, strong, meaning you have a backbone bone, or you, you, you can act, not just be you have passive. Integrity, um, yes, yes. And, pe and women are talking about this in Norway now because nothing motivates more and gets people together more than uh, outside fear. It doesn't matter where the fear is coming Come from. from. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. And now we're living in so turbulent times, and my point exactly is that it's supposed to happen. What we're seeing now in the world, it's supposed to happen because it's not linear the time, right? Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm not being distracted here now, but well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. as we spoke in the... Well, you talk about the, the cyclical uh, worldview of the, the, the whole cosmogony, idea... Cosmogony, you know, to keep the cosmos... Cosmogony, we're not sacrificing yeah. enough cows and horses and people, really. Yeah, uh, well, we are sacrificing quite a lot of people yeah, now. Can I see their dying? Are we sacrificing? We're not sacrificing a lot uh, enough. Uh, did you say that? No, I don't. Yes, it's. Uh, uh, well, I, th I think the times sped up now as well. Though time, you know, because of all the innovations, certainly in the last two hundred, three hundred years, innovations got faster and faster. Things changed quicker and quicker. And I think that fifteen hundred year cycle is going to squash down to yeah yeah probably even a five year cycle mm -hmm. you know soon there's mm. yeah and, and what's going to happen it's like and we feel out of control of it in a way if it moves too fast i mean with with all the conflict going on in the world so yeah yeah it's i don't know what that but it does that recycle mean there's a, a reset or a slowdown or or enlightenment comes or yeah, what what AI is just you know, well, made a we big. We can look at the different disasters. Or, we can look at the different disasters, and we can see what happened afterwards, before the different disasters. And a lot of the same things happened. Myths change much because you have lots of migrations, lots mm -hmm. of people dying, losing their uh, memory of their 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 culture or heritage. Language has changed, new trading patterns, but also more religion more militarized society also. Um, like like the Merovingians and Carolingians after the mm. crisis 1500 years ago yeah. or the Islamic conquests. But that, that's very mm. European focused or you know, Europe, Mediterranean, Near East focused. The rest of the yeah. world, you know, did that have the same problems or will Europe have a, a recycle event but the rest of the world stays the same and then does that have an impact given the global well, well, society? The butterfly effect is much more um, interesting now than ever before That's because if something is uh, happening in China, it affects the US exactly. Im immensely. You know, just look at the big uh, property giants in China. Yeah, uh, yeah. At the same time, you have it in, in, in the US, not to mention how many uh, billions and billions of US dollars the Chinese have, the government, I mean. Mm. Uh, I mean, they're all dependent on each other. 
and uh, if you if there is a blockage somewhere, uh, it affects the whole Everything, system. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Totally yeah, agree with yeah, that. So but it's all connected. Are there s certain patterns that that what our society is going through? Uh, not in the exact same way, but has happened before. I'm thinking, if, if we stick to specifically to how we understand myths and our sort of, so this okay. modern disconnection to ritual and myths, uh, where we now have, uh, I guess this is a sort of an enlightenment uh, situation, where we've we've seen, we've what do you call it, uh, we've. Um, uh, seen through that the myths are just fake and uh, superstition and we've moved beyond that because we're enlightened modern human beings and so mm -hmm. I mean, is it, oh, uh, oh, course, I'm a fishing for a yes yeah, well, here now. Well, well, there, oh, 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 yeah. sort of, it's very optimistic. If you look, <laughs> because like the heathen ways or you know, the, the, the um, belief in Germanic gods or the following of it, it seems to be increasing now. Oh. You know, so there's a lot more popularity in that and being in touch with that but, side. So, so you've mm -hmm. sort of seen a, like the cycles happened again and we've gone back. I think that's a yearning. Yeah. I think yeah. that's a yearning yeah. to some kind of security. Exactly, exactly. Some, something that has worked before, you know, because we, we, we've been taught not to like Christianity, yeah, at least in Europe, in Northern Europe mm. especially. And, and so when we don't have that religion, what do we do? We, we, we yearn for something else and it's all about security. Mm. Yes, and I, I think that has some good messages in it that keeps you in touch with family and friends and yeah. they're in the hover mall you know that if people who haven't read it read it it's a almost a thousand years old and it's a, a list of proverbs that are true today as yeah, they were absolutely. a thousand years ago yeah although i won't i wouldn't say some of them out because <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm only a messenger saying <laughs> just read, i'm not necessarily saying all of them well, are well, well there are some things about women in hover mall <laughs> <laughs> that, well Andy, don't mention the one <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but there is a consistent I thing. I'll, I'll, I'll mention this now for discussion. Uh, yes, <laughs> your academic interests. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm just a messenger. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I'm just saying that. But you see a, quite a consistent theme of the thing about women in Hovermore, which is uh, all women lie. Yeah. That's a theme you see in, in Greek um, yeah. literature, you know, that women are thieves and, and why they are logos rather than mythos. They, they are seen as... Uh, twisting facts and truth to make stories and that's really interesting you know if you want to think parts of myth are true and sacred and should be carried on why is and they talk about men as well so although i'm not so up to speed on that for some reason <laughs> uh, oh i just don't want to say but um but why does this persist that that yeah. sort of message that's a well really speaking of universal truths if that was what you were talking about i, I did say <laughs> those were sort of words no, no, but, about. Uh, but the thing is I, I do believe that if we were able to remove religion and, and remove all um what will we'll disc have discontinuity all along so we don't remember anything where we came from uh, i do believe that human nature and um geography landscape climate and everything uh it will enable us to come up with new myths. That's part of our human nature. And I think if we were to do that thought experiment, I think those new myths would have a lot of the similar universal truths in them, and they would be just be very similar to others. I can give you one example, like the pyramids. There, I, I remember Tor Heyerdahl when I first met him, he, he talked about so much. It can't be a coincidence that all the pyramids on the different continents and the island in the Pacific are all turned the same way according to the sun. And, and it, there has to be some kind of connection and they will have traveled 7,000 years ago across the world and the oceans because they were all connected. But it's not, it's very logical because it has to do with the rise of agriculture. It has to be with being able to do agriculture on land. So you have to move stone and put stone What's somewhere. What's the simplest, and tallest structure you can build? Exactly. Can, and, they and, don't have pillars and a flat roof. Yeah. You have to build a pyramid. And in addition, <laughs> when you start yes. with agriculture, you're so much more dependent on the sun. So of course you start worshipping the sun. And this can occur simultaneously, more or less, in, in South America or Americas and, and in Europe and in China. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, by coincidence, because it's it's the landscape shape, so it's the human nature, and that's how you can find some myths that have risen that are maybe similar but not related. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, totally agree with that. Thank you. Huh.
Well, that's an honor that you are, because I respect you very much. So, <laughs> yeah, that's good. Thank you, Stella. That's, yeah. yeah, but that's, that's true. That's true. Uh, farming didn't start at the same time, though. There are no, 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 but uh, yeah, variations. But, 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 yeah, but you actually see it. I mean, it does astound me that farming was created in all those different places because hmm. you don't think, oh, someone could have got it, but well, well, humans well, found a way. Well, everywhere. When wheat started to grow in the Middle East and you had all the corn here and there, um, of course, in the start, they would just uh, be a gatherer. Mm -hmm. on yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's how it took. And after a while, you know, ten thousand years, we and it gets warmer. Yeah. Sooner or later, you're going to start to do crops, right? And that's when everything changes because then you get property. Yeah, exactly. And then, as a society, who, who you do you blame same for cycles. You blame people for things, mm -hmm. so your mm -hmm. gods become human-like. And once you get hooked mm -hmm. to agriculture, you're hooked to cycles. Right. Yes, yeah, and, and we're still sitting here now yes. discussing cycles. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. yeah imagine uh, 2,200 years ago, they knew very well about the sorrow cycles. Uh, every 18 years or, or every nine years, you have some something happening with the sun yeah. or the moon. They knew about this, of course, it's cycles, and they were able to predict it. And, you know, it's uh, everyone would be able to uh, predict that, I believe. It's part of that human nature of curiosity and adaptation, which is why... Well, it's a key part of life, you have yeah. to survive. And, and those who don't adapt. It's yeah. interesting because I, I don't know if it's a bit of a stretch of a comparison, but when you see really good writers or painters, the way they create, create a, a uh, unified story is by repeating certain things. Yeah. So there is sort of a cyclical themes uh, yeah, yeah. across like paintings. you see that in in yes. uh, in uh, Moby Dick in the beginning you have that priest giving that speech in the front of the bow like mm -hmm. the captain so the positive anti antipode to Ahab hmm. so this is like a hidden yes. opposition that's like like yeah. a parenthesis yeah. you have one there and then you have one there mm. and you don't think about it when you start to analyze it it's like oh, it's, it's right there in your face well, well it's the same yeah. with twin theories, you know, twin myths, you know, uh, w w will that happen uh, because they're related or could they happen separately? Um, not sure, really, but uh, with something like yeah, that. That's right. interesting. So to have twins is, of course, not completely unheard of, it's, but it's well, not very common either. No. So it would have, it's something not special. Not to right? survive, it is, yeah. yes, and certainly back then. And that's, yeah. that's well, what it's an, another, another issue there is also two brothers fighting, like Cain and Abel. Yeah. But you see it also in the Norse sagas a lot. You have always, you have one dark brother with a dark mind and one beautiful who gets everything yeah. and they're in opposition to each other. And then you have the next next generation. I'm talking about Egil Skallagrimsson. Yes. Uh, uh, the next generation is, is the similar. You have one dark mind and one that's everything yeah. is easy in life. But yeah. this is universal, you know, there's always it's relatable. Yes, yeah, there are. Yeah, you always have heroes yeah. fighting monsters yeah. and, and, and like. the same but thing with hunter gatherers like in Scandinavia. Mm -hmm. um, because it's so far north, it's so extreme in a sense, um, you could only have children every six years, actually. You couldn't have them every two years, you know. So, uh, at least that's what uh, some of the geneticists I've been working with say that that's because oh, right, it's too much a drain on resources and time to. Yes, yes, it mm. wasn't possible. It wasn't su sustainable. Um, but of course, if you have a society in the um, sh how do you say shrinkses? No, fringes, Fring fringe, fringe, fringes, fringes. Yeah, on the you. edge of uh, on the edge of. Yeah, if yeah, you yeah. have a society in the fringes, um, fertility will of course be a vital part of the culture and religion. Mm. Uh, but it's a different kind of fertility than you get in the agricultural society. Yes, yes, who want the crops to grow rather yeah. than population to grow. So then what happens when you have first hunter-gatherers mixing with... Uh, with uh, Neolithic farmers. Neolithic yeah. farmers and, and creating a new blend. And then just a few centuries later, you have warriors with a yeah. whole different set of beliefs and myths mixing in like in Scandinavia and suddenly you're sitting there in the Viking Age trying to understand uh, why is there a cow uh, with Ymir? With yeah. Ymir is a giant from the north of Norway and the cow is actually from uh, the steppes in the, in the European mm -hmm. landscape but it's it's but they're dependent on each other in this blend or why is uh, Njord a masculine god 2,000 years ago? Changes, yeah. But then a feminine goddess in fertility 
1500 years earlier. A wise boulder going to the underworld because that's Persephone's role in, in a Greek myth. Yeah. Why, why has Freya got cats mm. near eastern yeah, archetype yes. just mm. banging there right in Scandinavia? Mm. You can, yes, the Neolithic farmer myths are there, the hunter-gatherer myths are there, and the Indo-European mm. myths are there, and the Sami myths are there. And that's why gods like Odin, certainly in Norse mythology, are incredibly complex because yeah. they're layers upon layers of different myths merged together. Mm. Are you aware that we're jumping into another rabbit hole now? We have a few hours ahead of us now. Yeah, yeah. Is that <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll do, that, do that one tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> but then we can talk about how Snorri inadmittedly accepts that Odin actually exists. Yeah, mm. that sounds good. Yeah.